Kenya's looking beyond Somalia for trade amid diplomatic tension between the two countries. After being ordered out of Somalia, Kenya is moving its embassy to Somaliland come April this year, worsening the already broken relationship. Both countries stand to lose with Kenya and Mira counting a billion dollar market loss. But what does Somalia's pullout mean for Kenya and what's the future of Somalia as an economic hub? John Kutuni with the details. Kenya has benefited on its presence in Somalia and the fallout is expected to have both diplomatic and economic consequences. To give you an idea, when you look at official data, it tells you Somalia's GDP is 5% of Kenya, Kenya is much bigger. But that's discounting the oil and gas which I just spoken to you about and discounting under the radar trade because there is a lot of trade that's going on which is not reflected in official statistics and that's sugar, charcoal, I mean the Al-Shabaab has survived on Somalia's economy so there's something there that's, that's helping them get to this point. And then of course you have two-way trade, I mean it's visible in places like Eastley um, and I think uh, the Somali diaspora who were displaced from Somalia, although they're now investing again in Somalia, invested a lot in Kenya. So from the perspective of, uh, of economic disruption, I think we are underestimating the economic disruption that could come from a major falling out between ourselves and our neighbour. Um, and also, don't forget, it would, I think, unsettle the northern part of Kenya as well. Um, I saw reports yesterday that the Somali army had moved up to the border. So, you know, all this volatility is never conducive to people doing business. And therefore, I would be very cautious about how we progress from here. United by a common enemy but divided by personal interest, economists warn Somalia is opening its option of trade partnerships and Kenya should be worried on its importance in the region. I think what Somalia is telling us is that it's no longer, we're no longer necessarily the most important relationship. We've got other people we can turn to. And, you know, there are plenty of people who want to get a foothold in Somalia. It's not just President Erdogan and the Emir of Qatar, it's the UAE want to, want, want to have a toehold there as well, although they're already in Somaliland, for example. So there are a lot of players who are, have a very strong interest. You know, once upon a time, the Horn of Africa was considered uh, very dislocated from the world. Today, people look at it in terms of the Mediterranean economy, in terms of the Middle East, and see it as an extension. On top of accessing Somaliland, President Uru Kenyatta recently hosted the Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, and this signifies Kenya's interest to cement its presence with our neighbours. But according to Ali Khan, the strategy is not all rosy. A 110 million people economy, if Kenya hasn't got a serious strategy to economically integrate and trade with this country, then we're not serious. I think from his perspective, he was showing, look, you know, we are a player in the Horn of Africa. We are, we've made strides, we're growing um, uh, two-way trade. Uh, you know, you've got the road going up there now. We've opened up this channel and he was getting people f focusing in on that opportunity. Whether uh, Ethiopia, you know, there is, a, there is a, a, uh, some thinking here that there is a tripartite uh, connection between Famajo, Abiy and Afawerki. So I think President Kenyatta was seeking to, uh, to maintain his very strong relationship with Abiy and make sure that he did not get cut off um, uh, uh, because the three, as far as I can see, are acting pretty much in unison. That's why you had the invitation out for Werke to come in and replace Kenyan soldiers. So I think President Kenyatta is playing his cards, um, um, but it's a complex hand he's got to play now. It's not a straightforward hand. There's so many different players and so many different situations. The international community like the United States and the EU is known to play a big role in negotiating between the fighting countries to avoid further damages like countries going into war. But has the international community done enough to solve the situation? I've correctly noted, there's a bit of a vacuum is the way I read it. And the question is, will that vacuum now stop that you've got Biden coming back, 
traditionalist uh, American politician? Will you see a bigger engagement uh, out of the State Department than you saw under Pompeo, who seemed to be just interested in reconciling everybody with Israel and not very much more, you know, when you looked at it. So I think, um, I think the international community will, will, is about to reach an inflection point. Things are going to change, but we're just in this uh, interregnum until we get Biden back in. Um, and and in, with respect to Europe, who are also a big donor, let, let's make no mistake, um, into that area of Africa, I mean, uh, you know, they give enormous budget support and other support um, as they fund a lot of the Amazon activities. Um, I think in Europe, they've been focused on Greece, they've been focused on the Mediterranean, North Africa, which has you know, uh, been their biggest uh, focal point. But I think you'll see them now looking further and thinking to themselves, this is actually one, one geopolitical area stretching from the Mediterranean through the GCC area all the way down to the Horn of Africa. So I think that will change. So I think this vacuum about which you're asking me is about to come to an end. And it was a phenomena of the Trump administration. Kenya is willing to lose Somalia as a partner by looking at the long-term benefit of holding on to the maritime border that has potential for high reserve oil production. And if anything, Kenya won't be backing down on its position at the coastal borders. Reporting for Switch TV, my name is Joan Kutun.